I grew up in a Christian home. My father was a pastor, my grandfather was a pastor, two of my uncles were pastors, my sister-in-law was in full-time Christian work, so I grew up in a very strong Christian environment. I was exposed to sexual sin probably at the age of two or three um, by an older gentleman who molested me, and he continued to molest me probably for a period of two years. And that was really my introduction and really opened the door to sexual sin and same-sex attraction. Uh, growing up um, with this kind of in my background, this molestation or this introduction to sexual sin, I just had this growing lust in my heart. And what started as this molestation turned into my own lust. And I started fantasizing about uh, men um, on TV, I was introduced to TV. I was one, the first latchkey kid where my parents would sit me down in front of the TV. So I was exposed to a lot of images at a very young age. And those just started going in my mind, in my mind, in my mind over and over again. And probably, I think younger than most young boys, probably when I was 9, 10, 11, started um, uh, masturbating. So as I got into my teen years, my lust and fantasy life just grew exponentially. And I went from masturbating maybe once or twice a month, maybe, to almost every day by the time I graduated high school. Throughout this whole time, and even into my college years, I was very, very active in church. Uh, Sunday school, church camps, all of that. And then when I got into college, I became a Sunday school teacher. I was a leader at church camps. Finally, when I was 18, my lust and my masturbation habit and this fantasy life that I had created really pushed me uh, to the next step, and that was really seeking after uh, physical sex and sexual encounters with other people. And I had my first sexual encounter when I was 18. From the ages of 18 to 26, I was having occasional physical encounters with other men, um, but still being involved and in, actively involved in my church. By the time I was 26, I was pretty tired of living the double life, and at that point, I just walked away from the church and stopped going to church altogether. After I left church, I just completely gave myself over to the world, um, not just you know in the sexual aspect, but I started drinking heavily, um, going to parties, bars, um, but then my sin actually grew as well, um, from maybe once every couple months to now every week. I had a very, very typical routine when experiencing sex and going out and having sex. Um, it would always start at home. I'd be laying on the couch watching a movie or TV, and then eventually on my laptop watching YouTube. And that just filled my mind with lust, so much so that I had to get out, the, literally get out the door, get in my car, and do one of two things. Either go to an adult bookstore and hang out there um, all day, all night, sometimes 24 hours, and have multiple encounters while at the bookstore or get a hotel room um, for a couple nights and then go to the bookstore, have encounters there, and also bring men back to the hotel room and have multiple encounters. Um, and that was my typical pattern. Uh, this lifestyle that I was living just got out of control and really was causing me uh, a lot of angst, agitation, irritation which led to uh, depression, uh, which led really even to suicidal thoughts. Um, I just didn't see any hope of getting out of this. It was not something that I was satisfied with. I could see there was no satisfaction ever. Um, so there would be brief times where I would re actually reach out for help, uh, whether it was my parents or a Christian friend, and I was directed to Christian counseling. So I say over the years, uh, I went to maybe five or six different Christian counselors. Um, unfortunately, during uh, these times with these counselors, I wasn't really provided with much hope 
uh, for change or that I could ever get out of my situation or really answers that I was looking for. Um, so eventually I would just stop going and I would return uh, back to my sin. When I first arrived at Pure Life Ministries in July of 2010, there was a definite difference in, um, I don't know what you call it, the atmosphere here. Um, there was just peace and I was really tired. I was desperate and coming into that environment where every person I talked to said, you're in the right place. Um, that spoke something to me, that I was in the right place, and there was comfort in those words, you're in the right place. And um, waking up that first morning after arriving late at night, um, there was, I don't even know how to describe it, there was peace and hope, maybe for the first time in my life. And I, I knew that I knew that I knew. I can't even tell you how I know, how I knew it then, that something was going to happen here. I knew it. I knew something was going to happen. I knew it. And it was really just setting foot on this campus. It really was. It was like coming home. That's what it was. It was like coming home. Probably, I would say three or four months in, I had what I would deem probably my biggest breakthrough um, of the program. And I was sitting in the office with my counselor and he asked what my biggest idol was. And I, for the life of me, could not think of anything. I said my car, I said hockey, um, but those didn't resonate with me. And I walked out of the office and it, literally, as soon as I walked out the door and was walking down the hall, it was like I realized that I was my biggest idol, that it was me, and that I had lived my whole life to please myself. And, um, and, and I just saw in that instant the wake of devastation that I had laid in, over everyone that I cared about, everyone that I said I loved. In that moment, um, it all came to, to an end. Self, the idol of self came crashing down and the Lord was really there to just receive me and I could see the Lord and what He had done and what He had sacrificed for me and uh, His blood, His mercy and compassion. And really from that day forward, I have, I've never been the same. But it was that realization that I was the problem that it was me, that it was my selfishness, uh, my uh, desire, insatiable lust, me, 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 me. Um, that was the real problem, not other people, it was me and what I wanted. And I didn't care who I devastated to get that. And when I saw that and then saw the cross, it was over for me, definitely over. I have temptations. I will say I have temptations when I see someone without his shirt on or a thought will pop into my head of a previous person that I had been with. But to return to my old lifestyle, never, never. The Lord, how could I? How could I return it? You know, it's Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, you know, my reasonable service for what the Lord has done. Are you kidding me? I would never turn back because my life now is to serve the Lord. It's all the least I can do to give my life as a living sacrifice, my body as a living sacrifice. So there is no thought of going back to my old routines, my sin. Do I face temptation? Absolutely. I still have a flesh. But um, as far as returning to my old lifestyle, no, not at all.